can you all hear me? So normally we are having nearly 20, 25 students. At the moment, only 11 students are there. Yes, 12. Shall we wait for some more minutes? Okay, madam. Okay. So then here I have shown you the syllabus outline. So here, can you guess what we are going to do? I'm all, I, every day I am showing this to you because then you can get an idea about where you are in your subject. Uh, I'm sure we have done introduction to language and linguistic, phonetics and phonology, morphology, syntax, semantic we completed. According to my knowledge, today we have to start with pragmatics. Am I correct? Yes, madam. Okay. Okay, so today we are moving to a new uh, session, new topic hmm? that is under language and linguistic. The topic is pragmatics. Okay, so do you have any idea about pragmatics? And uh, for an example, you know, the phonology or phonetics, that's about sound system, how sounds are produced, and then uh, how they are used in the language, in fact. Then when it comes to morphology, you know, that is the formation of words. And when it comes to Syntax, you know, that's about uh, rules and regulations, grammar, which put words in an order. Okay, so then when it comes to semantic, you know, that's about meaning. So what is pragmatics? Anybody who knows the answer? Any idea? Haven't you heard of the term uh, pragmatics? No, madam. No, okay, no issue. It's okay, better. So if you don't know what pragmatics is, we learn it today. Okay, read this. Okay, when you finish reading, tell me. Okay, okay madam. Oh, 
hope you finish reading. Uh, pragmatics is the branch of linguistics that deals with how context affects what we mean uh, when we speak and how others interpret our meaning. Okay, we'll understand it. So under semantic, we got to know semantic means meaning. So each and every word is having a particular meaning. So when I say the word dog, automatically the meaning comes to your mind. So you will imagine a creature, an animal with four legs, two ears, having a tail like that. Okay, so that is semantic. But pragmatics, that is related to meaning. But it's something beyond that. Okay, so it is about how context affects. So then uh, we are talking in particular environment, particular context. And that context also will affect the meaning. I will give you some nice examples. And also uh, when we utter certain uh, words, how the listener interpret it. And all these things will come under pragmatics. Okay, in other words, it goes beyond the literal meaning of words. Okay, so they are each and every word of English language, even in Sinhala language, Tamil language, they are having a literal meaning. But sometimes uh, the meaning goes beyond the literal meaning. And that meaning is uh, understood because of the context. Okay, so consider the speaker's intent, the situation, and the listener's background knowledge. All these things will affect. For an example, I will give you one nice example. Uh, this is just an example, okay? So normally we say dog to an animal. Haven't you heard people who got angry? They are calling dogs to men. People, I mean. Yes, my dear. Yes. So that is uh, something related to pragmatics. That's not just the literal meaning, something beyond that. We know that is not the animal. Okay? Hope you got some idea here. We'll see. Okay, madam. Right, okay. Uh, focuses on context. Under pragmatics, we are paying our attention not only to the literal meaning. Uh, more than that, we pay our attention to context. Uh, see, uh, imagine someone is saying, it's cold in here. While bundle up in winter clothes. So, when we cross hands. A shivering like that person is telling it's cold here. Pragmatics help us understand that despite the literal meaning, you might be hinting at someone closing a window or turning up the heat. Okay, so the surface meaning is it's cold in here. But exact meaning the person wanted to convey is Please close the window or turn up the heater. Did you get the example? Yes, my dear. Okay. The focus on context. Then social interaction.
ഓക്കെ സോഷ്യൽ ഇന്ററാക്ഷൻ പാഗ്മാറ്റിക്സ് റെക്കഗ്നൈസസ് ദാറ്റ് ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഇസ് എ ടൂൾ വി യൂസ് ടു ഇന്ററാക്ട് വിത്ത് അതേഴ്സ് ഓക്കെ സോ ലാംഗ്വേജ് ഇസ് എ ടൂൾ വി യൂസ് ഇറ്റ് ടു ഇന്ററാക്ട് വിത്ത് അതേഴ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് സംതിങ് വി ഓൾ നോ ഇറ്റ് കൺസിഡേഴ്സ് ഫാക്ടേഴ്സ് ലൈക്ക് പലൈറ്റ്നെസ് ഹ്യൂമർ ആൻഡ് സാക്കസം വി ക്യാൻ ഡ്രാസ്റ്റിക്കലി ചേഞ്ച് ഹൗ സംതിങ് ഈസ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റുഡ് okay so if you can't understand what it is here i will explain the same utterance can be with different meaning according to different context so the same thing when we utter politely it convey different meaning the same thing we when we utter humorously apa upahase okay so it conveys another meaning and the same thing when we utter with sarcasm ha upahase once again which can drastically change how something is understood okay so for an example uh, we can say very politely uh, uh, with happy uh, with a uh, uh, very nice mood oya uh, mahatela okay you have put on weight Okay, so then we are telling polite you have put on weight so that is the the meaning is something else that means we are referring to the uh, person's body size and how he or she put on weight but when we say oh yeah kate to ela mukada something like that we say sometimes we say uh, to a person who put on weight recently in that way ഒപ്പോസിറ്റ്സും uh with different meaning according to the purpose or else uh, we can say you have put on weight to a person uh who uh put on weight who got put on weight recently at the same time we can say uh you have put on weight to a person who became very bony is it clear to you yes madam okay so social interaction I to bold it yeah negotiating meaning okay read okay negotiating meaning okay madam hi negotiating meaning the communication is a two way street so there are two ways that means speaking and listening so they they uh, they are the two paths actually okay speakers and listeners constantly negotiate meaning based on what's left unsaid the situation and they are shared knowledge so then we are social being because daily we talk and express our idea so we have this experience so when we talk with a person for a certain time uh we each other understand the things which were not said to either okay so that means everything i uh, need not to be said so we understand unsaid stuff also okay so then pragmatic pragmatic says about that also so uh, how we understand 
unsaid things with the knowledge of the context. We do like that. So that means everything should not be explained. <clears throat> okay, see some examples, then you will understand the similar example we discussed, but still you just see. Okay, madam. Okay, so hope example is clear. Uh, indirect request. So when you want to make an indirect request, uh, saying it's hot in here to someone you know, uh, well, isn't literal demand for them to understand physics. So then if we say when it is sweating, we'll say it's very hot here. So we, our purpose is not to teach the other per person physics. Pragmatic helps understand it's likely a request to open a window or adjust the air conditioning. Okay, so our purpose of telling it's hot here is not to teach the listener physics. What is hotness and how it uh, uh, occurs. It's not like that. So indirectly we are asking the other person uh, please open the window or adjust the air conditioning, something similar to that. Okay, so then the other person will uh, definitely either open a window or adjust the air conditioning. Okay, so that part is also there when someone is telling it's hot in here, the other person will open the window or adjust the air conditioning. So how the listener understood the meaning that is actually through pragmatics. Okay, one more example. Okay, madam. Yeah, okay. Sarcasm. Uh, see the example here. We can have a better example than this. Someone says, great. That's exactly what I needed. Dripping with sarcasm. So literal meaning suggests it's a good news. But pragmatics help you understand they are likely frustrated or annoyed. The person who is telling like this, may be really annoyed, sad, or maybe frustrated, excited. Tone of voice and facial expressions of often play a big role in role here. So to understand pragmatic meaning, our tone of the voice, the facial expressions, they are also a matter. Okay, then something I will give you a better example. So then recently a level results were out and just imagine uh, one student, he got uh, very poor results. Then parents may be telling, ah, we are something like that you might have heard of. I'm sorry, I can't bring Tamil examples. We are not So then parents are not talking about something positive. Ne? So you can understand what they are telling. Are these examples clear to you? Yeah, madam. Sorry, okay.
presupposition. Highlight that also. No, no, later I will do that. Before I share the slides with you, I will do that. Presuppositions. Okay, madam. Oh, uh, presuppositions saying, are you still mad at me? Okay. Instead of me, we will say, are you still mad at her? We'll say like that. So then normally we will not ask uh, this way. Uh, presupposes that the listener was previously mad. The surface meaning, the literal meaning says, this particular person was mad in the past. But pragmatic meaning is something else. We can easily understand maybe that person was interested in the other person. Maybe he had a crush over that person like that. Okay, so we understand the meaning, that meaning. Uh, and that is with pragmatics. That's not the literal meaning. Okay, some more examples. Okay, yes, didactic expressions, words like this, that, here, and they are only make sense based on the context. Uh, didactic means uh, the meaning is actually the based on the context. Okay, sometimes we can say uh, this is very hard. So this, it does not have an exact meaning. According to different contexts, it differs. Uh, this uh, this is very tough. It, this may be referring to a, le a lesson or this may refer to a task. Okay, so that here, here it may refer to the particular place at that context. So come here. Maybe uh, when you are there in the school, you are asking students to come here to the, your, your classroom. And when you are at home, it is your home. It's like that. Only makes sense based on the context. Uh, saying, pass me that while pointing at a specific object clarifies what that refers to. Okay, so then uh, maybe you are having a tea while having some snacks. Uh, the short is in a restaurant. So then uh, when uh, the sauce bottle is with uh, one of your friends, you may be asking the person, uh, pass me that. They're pointing the uh, sauce bottle. So then there it is, uh, the bottle of sauce or the sauce bottle. But you can say that to something else also. Okay, so meaning of these uh, dietic expressions such as this, that, and here they are, it totally depends on context. Okay, some more.
Okay, madam. Okay. So, if you have a context, the formality of your language changes depending on the situation. You wouldn't speak to your boss the same way you speak to your friend. Okay, so then according to the social context, the way we talk, it differs. Uh, pragmatics help you choose appropriate language to uh, for different city. Okay, so then uh, there are verbs with the same, with the same, there are different verbs with the same meaning. For an example, we can say kill, murder, assassinate, slain, like that. But they are different. So then at the same time, we can say died, died, and Marmakian died, passed away, kick the bucket. Okay. So there are many more methods. So when we talk about uh, demise, for an example, uh, very formal, we say demise of beloved uh, so and so. And you can say uh, his father-in-law passed away. And we don't say died at that time. Ne? So according to social context, uh, we uh, you choose different uh, language, different words. And pragmatics will help you to choose appropriate language at different settings. Is it clear? Yes, madam. Are you okay? If nothing is uh, clear, you have to ask. Okay, so that is about pragmatics. Okay, are you clear with pragmatics? If you have any questions, you can put it into chat box and you can ask. Normally, uh, in other places, I know you might have learned in detail uh, phonetics, phonology, morphology, semantic, uh, then syntax, but maybe very rarely you learn pragmatics. But pragmatics is very practical. Okay, because uh, when we talk, when we communicate, so uh, pragmatics help us uh, to understand the exact meaning. Because meaning depends on the context. Okay, check whether you got the points properly. If yes, you say yes, then we can go to another lesson. If there yes, are... Yes, Hari, okay. And we'll go to another lesson. Madam? Yeah? So uh, uh, social context, uh, give me a more example. example. Okay, okay. Go to the place. Uh, last one, madam. Last one? Yeah. Ah, okay. Give me the uh, some example. Okay, sure, sure. The... Ah, okay. The formality of your language changes depending on the situation. Uh, something like this. Uh, of the same example which I say. So what is the meaning of die? Marinama. Yeah. What is the meaning of pass away? Same meaning. Same meaning. Uh, kick the bucket. Idiom me uh, yeah. his, his grandmother kicked the bucket. Maruna. And so then, uh, uh, just imagine you are talking uh, or you are addressing the gathering at a funeral. Funeral like a katawa Do you use kick the bucket, the word term? No. Okay, yeah, you will say uh, the, this, uh, pass. this uh, yeah, passed away, something like that. Or yeah. else you just imagine you inform about a death of uh, the person to a team group. You are sending an email. Then are we using kick the bucket or die simply? No. So that is, yeah, passed away. Or in other ways, the demise, the noun. Demise. Okay, so according to social context. Okay. Okay, did you get okay. the point? Yeah, madam. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And now if it is clear, we'll go to... Check it here. Wait. Yeah, wait, I will. 
Select the other one. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the next topic in your syllabus. Language variation and change. Okay, so through your experience, if you know language is something which changes. At the same time, uh, there are lots of differences, variations uh, among languages and also within the language also. Okay, so then I don't know whether I told uh, with you, uh, maybe sometimes uh, language when it does not change, it will become a dead language. Okay, so they are a very nice, very powerful languages uh, who which have become dead languages today. In the past, they were very powerful dominating languages. For an example, you might have heard of Pali, Sanskrit. So there, there were books written on it. There were lots of uh, stuff uh, written with those languages. But now, no one is talking in Pali or Sanskrit. So they became dead languages because they rejected change. Okay, so then even your language, Tamil language, even Sinhalese language, your languages, they have changed a lot. Sometimes uh, we can't talk in our own languages, purely with the words of the language. Okay, just think for a while. Can you utter even a single sentence, some other language sentence, in your mother tongue without using English? I'm not telling it's impossible, but commonly, generally, we can't. And uh, I'm always uh, telling you an example. Sometimes I might have uh, told this early somewhere. Uh, one of my colleagues, he was telling me when he was uh, traveling one day, he overheard uh, two women are talking. May tablets daily gattahama body ekata harmful. I know here there are Muslim students. Yeah, hope you can understand Singhala. Yes, madam. Yeah. May tablets daily gattahama body ekata harmful. You see how many Sinhalese words are there? How many English words are there? There are more English words. Okay, the same idea you just uh, uh, turn to your mother tongue, those who are using Tamil language. The same thing you can understand very easy. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we'll go to the lesson. Okay, madam. Okay. Language variation and change is a fascinating field within linguistics that explores how languages are not static but constantly evolving. Okay, so there are different uh, sections, different field inside linguistic. We say applied linguistic is a different area. So just like that, there are different sections. Language variation and change is also an interesting field within linguistic. And it explores language is not something static. Static means something is at the same place without changing. But constantly evolving. So language is changing constantly. 
without a break it is changing at a straight it examines the different ways a language is used and how these variations can lead to a long term changes in the language itself sometimes minor changes started uh, have here uh, are having long term changes actually i will give you some examples okay yeah read and understand Okay. Uh, imagine a variation based on social factors. So then uh, uh, variation, some variations are based on social factors. Uh, imagine a group of teenagers texting and a lawyer writing a legal document. So there are two types of persons. Uh, teenagers are there. Uh, at the same time, there is a lawyer writing a document. So the teenagers are texting, maybe using their smartphone. A lawyer is writing a legal document. These are, their language will likely differ. We can easily understand uh, their language is totally different. The pragmatics that we learned early plays a role here. But so does social variations. Okay, so then pragmatic differences are there. At the same time, social differences are also here. Uh, teenagers might use slang terms, emojis, abbreviations like lol, lol. What is the meaning of lol? What is the meaning? LOL. Laugh out loud. LOL. Okay. So, uh, were you using it uh, without uh, any uh, meaning? Okay. So, then... Uh, GR8, I have no idea. I don't know whether it is spelling mistakes. I'll check in. While the lawyer would likely uh, maintain a formal tone with complete sentences and proper grammar. So, lawyer's document, it may contain uh, complete sentences and proper grammar. This variation reflects the social context and the desire to belong to a particular group. Okay, so then uh, one reason for language variation is social factors. The so lawyers can't just uh, uh, write something uh, as if teenagers are texting. And teenagers should not text to their friends as how a lawyer is writing a document. So they are social factors. Is it clear? Check whether you got the point. This message. Ah. Ah, GR8 means uh, I'm not from your generation. Okay, I'm not using them. Thank you. Asameya is telling GR8 means great. 
Okay, very nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, madam. Okay, great. Great. Uh, I don't know why eight is there. Maybe for the pronunciation, eh? great. Ah, okay. Two. Uh, so then, according to the social factors, the variations are there in the language. And the next one is variations are there based on region. Okay, madam. Hi, okay. So, variation based on region. Region means geographical region, area, travel across different regions of a country, and you might encounter variations in pronunciation, vocabulary, and even grammar. Okay, so even within this small country, Sri Lanka, this is very clearly visible. We Sinhalese understand. The lots of variations in Sinhalese language when we go from uh, northern to south. And you Tamil, uh, Tamil, I mean, you Muslim people are also talking in Tamil, they use in Tamil language. The Tamil language users can see lots of variations. Jaffna Tamil language is different. Uh, upcountry Tamil language is different. The Tamil language at uh, Batikola, that area is something different. There are differences. The same thing is there in English language also. So then, for an example, soda might be called pop in some areas of US. Uh, then while dinner could be tea in the south. So there are differences. These regional variations can become Entrench. Entrench means they will become very strong in a way that will never change uh, over time and even become defining features of dialects. Okay, so then these variations will become very strong one day. And then when it comes to Sinhalese language, so southern language, how this the southern people talk is totally different from how we talk. Okay, is that uh, clear to you? Sure. Yeah, Mila. Hi. Then historical variation. Okay, Mila. Okay. Historical variations. Languages change significantly over centuries. Okay, so then I can take examples from Sri Lanka, but I'm sorry, I can't take examples from Tamil language. As you can understand Sinhalese examples, you just see whether the same thing is there in your language. Okay, so when it comes to English, K N I G H T, we say night. But in old English, long time ago, they pronounced the sound ka also, kite. We can't pronounce that also, kite, not like that. So then later, the sound ka became silent. Okay, so then uh, there are such words even in Sinhalese language actually. So some of the terms 
which we consider as fill the terms today. I can't uh, tell them openly in this open platform. Some Sinhalese words which appear fill the today, when we analyze their original meaning, they were with a positive meaning. Okay, but it changes with the time. So another example is, uh, if I tell you, you people are adults, uh, I am explaining them so that you can understand it clear. Uh, so then uh, certain terms like, for an example, uh, Samanalaya. Samanalaya, it's a bird, insect. Okay. But in the past, the term Samanalaya, it was used to indicate innocence. Can you understand what I am telling? Yes, madam. Oh. Uh, if I give you one example, you know this Vijay Kumar Tunga, he was assassinated. He was shot to death. So at his funeral, one of his uncles, Carlo Fonseca, Professor Carlo Fonseca, you might have heard. He was the dean of the faculty of medicine, Columbia University. He also passed away. So he delivered a speech in front of the dead body of Vijay Kumar Tunga. So he was telling in Singhala, me marilla in me samanale. So what he intended, pragmatic meaning you have to get. Huh? So what he intended was uh, the dead person was an innocent person. Okay. So then the meaning of the Sinhalese term Samanalaya was written uh, the meaning innocent in the past. But what will happen if we uh, use the same term to a dead person today? So just imagine you happen to deliver a speech at a funeral. A dead person is, uh, is there, the dead body is there. So if you say this, may Madeline is summon a lake, how uh, do people understand about the dead person? How do we use the term summon a layer today? For which purpose? <laughs> uh, that means uh, the person uh, who is gay, eh? Yeah. who is having uh, homosexual affairs so according to the according to the history or with the time also uh, language varies that meaning varies Sorry? okay we'll go to the next one how variation leads to change Okay, Mila. Yeah. Uh, these variations are trend. Uh, some regional and historical factors all influence how language is used. Okay, so then uh, if you think that these uh, changes and variations are random, it's not actually. So it's a process. When a particular variation becomes widespread, Okay, so when a variation is widespread, just like Samanalaya, the meaning in single language, uh, if a large number of teenagers adopt a slang term, it might eventually become more mainstream and used by older generation too. Okay, so that is the interesting thing. Sometimes uh, the changes are done by teenagers. And it is, it becomes very common among teenagers and ultimately even the older generation will use the same. 
and even the word samanalaya may be something like that. Maybe that was started by teenagers. But now everyone knows uh, the meaning and they use the word with the same meaning. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay. When a regional variation becomes the norm, uh, the dominance of a particular region through media or cultural influence can lead to its dialect feature becoming more widespread. Okay, so then maybe a particular term is a regional term, uh, a term which is very uh, often used in a particular area. Maybe uh, the mass media, maybe uh, radio channels, uh, TV channels can make that term very popular. So ultimately, that regional term will become uh, the more widespread term maybe in the country, for the whole country. And think whether you can get some examples from Sri Lanka so that... Okay, so there may be certain terms which were originally regional, but because of media, now it has become very common. Think of some, if you can remember something, you can share. And sometimes we know that sometimes because of certain teledramas, certain movies, films, there are certain terms which... Uh, are uh, started to be used very commonly and so people use them uh, widespread actually any example which you can remember And if you went, oh, sorry, yes. Sorry. I have never looked at here, yeah. Can't hear. So, in reality, so people have started, uh, people have started telling. No, it's not clear. Maybe some uh, uh, signal error. Okay, Hari. So then uh, sometimes there's uh, some teledramas. Okay, so they are using such terms very often. So then these days, if you say then you all watch teledramas, ne? so then even I have, I don't watch when the teledrama is telecast, but if I am interested in, I will watch it uh, on YouTube and you also may, uh, may be doing the same thing. Arame, Pisunatan Shok. So that's very common these days. I don't know whether you watch that particular teledrama. Uh, you know these things. Ne? So they will become widespread. Um, and because of some reality shows, people start telling the best. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Good example. Uh, when people say the best. Mother. Sorry? People that usually they say the best. Ah, uh, the best, the best. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when uh, then uh, 
finale for an example ne the final kiyana grand finale so because of media so now even uh, those who uh, did not use uh, pronounce the words that way as a pattern they say finale uh, when pronunciation shift become ingrained ingrained means uh, very rigidly rooted so they cannot be changed over generations a sound change adopted by a community can become the standard pronunciation okay so then when this pronunciation change pronunciation is used by the majority for a long time i'll tell it once again when this change pronunciation is used by the majority for a long time it will become the standard pronunciation that happens actually so then later if we do not pronounce like that uh, people will think we our pronunciation is not standard hari okay Okay. Okay. Uh, examples uh, from English language: the Great Vowel Shift. The sound. Uh, the sound change occurred in English between 14th and 18th century. We are not totally aware of that, but we can take it as an example. The pronunciation of many vowel changes changed, leading to the modern sound we have today. For instance, n a m e name. We say name. but in the past in 14th and 18th century the name was pronounced as nam just like father how we use a in the word father father same way nam but it changed as name so grammatical structures also changes Okay, man. Okay, so lots of grammatical cases. You know, there are cases you might have learned them. For an example, nominative case, accusative case, genitive case. The nominative means a uh, subject. Nominative case we use for subjects. I, we, you, they, he, she, it. Accusative case for objectives. Objective objects. Me, our, uh, sorry, me, us, you. Her, like that. Okay, so genitive case is for possession. My, you are our like that. Okay, so they no need of that knowledge here actually. So old English had a more complex grammatical system with different cases for nouns depending on their function in a sentence. Okay, so then uh, uh, even uh, 
we know these cases are there with pronouns, but in old English, the cases were there for nouns also. Over time, this system simplified in modern English, but now in modern English, we don't have cases for nouns actually. So then we are talking about language changes. We will talk it further, but we should know uh, the importance of language variation and change. Okay, Melda. Okay. Importance of language variation. Change, uh, sorry, studying language variation and change helps us understand the history and evolution of language. Okay, so because of this variation and change, study or studying them help us to understand uh, the history and evolution of language. It also sheds light on the social dynamics at play within a speech community. So then we can get some understanding about social factors, how particular society function. Furthermore, it allows us to appreciate the richness and flexibility of human language, constantly adapting to meet our communicative needs. Okay, because of these variations and changes, we can understand human languages are very flexible and they should be so because constantly we meet our communicative needs. So how we communicate today may not be the way our future generation communicate tomorrow. Okay, it's like that. <laughs> Uh, somebody's microphone you have to switch off Sorry, okay okay now we are moving to another section There are several ways to categorize language variations based on geography, based on social factor, based on formality, based on other factors. We discussed these things, but I thought uh, some more knowledge uh, we can uh, get to know discussing. So this is not exactly what we discussed early, but something similar to that. Okay, so dialect. You should have some idea about these things. See what is a dialect. Okay, madam. Okay, dialect. A dialect is a regional or social variety of a language that differs from the standard form in pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary, but is still mutually intelligible with other dialects of same language. Okay, so the idea is 
dialect is they are within the language. Okay, so then uh, uh, the reason for a dialect may be something regional, a geographical area or social. Uh, that differs from the standard form. Dialect is not the standard form. Standard form is there. If you take Sinhalese language, there is and stand. Uh, there is a standard form uh, which we use for writing and which we use for formal situation. But dialect is uh, something different. And these differences are there in pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, but still mutually intelligible with other dialects of the same language. So then there may be many dialects for a one language. So then if we take Sinhalese language, how Sinhalese language is spoken in southern area is different from how it is spoken in up country. And then how it is spoken in Anuradhapur area and how it is spoken in uh, some other places. Okay, the even Tamil language is like that. So we can say southern dialect, uh, Candian dialect. The Candian people, I don't know whether there are maybe students here also. They will say Kanta, Bonta, Yanta, the sound. And then people in Kurunegala area, they will say the Kanda, Bonda, Yanda, like that. Okay, so then uh, it differs. Hope you got an idea about dialect. Yes, madam. Oh, based on geography, there are regional dialects. So we don't have experience, but you should know the dialects are there in English language also. Okay, Melia. Yes. Uh, regional dialects. There are variations spoken in specific geographic region. When it comes to English language, within America, uh, southern dialect might have clear vowel sounds and vocabulary terms compared to standard American uh, English. Standard American English is there, but southern dialect is something different. They have distinct vowel sounds and vocabulary, just like uh, the languages in Sri Lanka.
okay what is this message mm -hmm. Ah, another one. Hasan Miranga is telling uh, Hillbilly English from Upper Land. I am not familiar with them. Appalachian in USA. Okay, so that is another variety uh, of English, dialect of English in USA. Yeah. So you can see the term in uh, chat box actually, uh, Pasan has uh, typed it. Okay, then uh, sometimes dialects are there due to social factors. Uh, so then social factors like education level, profession, age and gender. Uh, so for instance, doctors might have a specific medical jargon they use. So while teenagers might have their own slang terms, so then sometimes uh, when two teenagers are speaking, uh, adults can't understand what they are talking actually. So they are having their own uh, dialect. So then uh, really the uh, 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 matured person, elderly person will be uh, helpless. They can't understand what they are talking. Okay, so that is there, social factors. And you know, then this uh, uh, policeman. So they have their own dialect. And then those who are working in army forces, they have their own dialect. The university student, they have their own dialect like that. Ethanolics, that is also there. Ethanolics, you know, ethnic from the term ethnic, this comes. Uh, these are varieties associated with particular ethnic groups. They can be influenced by the group's cultural, heritage, and language background. And you know, in America, there are black Africans. They are called black American nowadays. So uh, how black American talks English language is different from how other Americans talks. And that is called African American vernacular English, A-A-V-E. So that is the ethnolect. So then in, in India, actually, we can have plenty of examples for ethnolects. And maybe even Hindi language is used in different way by different ethnic groups. And even Tamil language. So then in Sri Lanka, I, uh, we can take the Tamil language as an example. And is there a difference how Muslims use Tamil language in Sri Lanka and how Tamils use Tamil language? I don't know. So yes, Maya, is yeah, there madam. a difference? Yeah, madam. Many, ah, differ many differences are there. Yes. Yeah. So then yeah. uh, Tamil language used by Muslims it's an ethnolect, actually. Tamil language used by Tamil, that is also a kind of ethnolect. Similarities are there, but there are certain things uh, which depend on the culture.
Okay, madam. Yes. So then, based on formality, uh, there are uh, variations in language registers. So these are variations used according to the formality of a situation. So formal registers are used in professional setting or writing, while informal registers are used in casual conversation. So then how we welcome a person uh, who came for a wedding, family wedding, is different from how we welcome a guest at the function, I mean the meeting. So then if you are organizing a function, English day like that, so how you welcome uh, the guest is totally different from how you welcome a person who comes to your house. For instance, uh, you would likely use a more formal register when giving a presentation compared to chatting with a friend. Okay, so then when you are doing a presentation, you all have done presentations when you were studying. So how you do a presentation is totally different from how you chat with a friend. Registers. Okay, madam. Yes. Then other factors, jargon. So jargon is specialized language used by a particular profession or group. Okay, so for an example, legal jargon, for instance, has specific terms and phrases lawyers might use. Okay, so then uh, when we are listening to a, a conversation by two lawyers, we can't understand certain things because they are using words in their jargon. The same way we can't understand when two doctors are talking about an operation. Okay, so the same way we can't understand the jargon used by fisherman community. Okay, so then uh, just like that jargon. So jargon is very uh, specialized language used by a particular profession or a group. Okay. If it is not clear, ask and put the message. Yeah? Okay, madam. Yes, slang. Slang is a type of informal language that's distinct from the standard form of language. Okay, so then uh, slang is a little bit uh, far from the standard language. Teenagers often develop their own slang terms to connect with their peers. Okay, then some of the terms that teenagers use. Uh, so... They are examples for slang. So for an example, if I give you some examples, uh, they are, I, I don't know, now there may be many more things. Huh? I'm also old and I have not been touched with that. Uh, so something like badur. Okay, so there was a time that boys used to uh, use the term badur for girls. Something similar to that. So some of these slang terms are not accepted actually in standard format. And uh, 
the elders they don't like when their children are using slangs it's like that the agar pat pat rahai now it has become uh, that is one example for when uh, certain variations are used for a long time they will become uh, confirmed again pat rahai okay so then uh, in the past actually pat was having a negative meaning in singular language now it is with totally positive meaning as uh, uh, within no time uh, the term patta will come to writing also hari okay informal slang is most commonly used in casual conversation with friends family or people you know when okay slang is not used in standard conversation formal conversation casual conversation sometimes we say patio out of love patio ya ko hedagi something like that api to mohima urane ano ke that's a slang actually uh, it wouldn't be appropriate to use slang in formal setting like job interviews or academic papers so then we can't use slang language for formal setting okay mina yes the special thing regarding slang is uh, slang terms uh, changes very rapidly a particular slang will not be there forever new slang words emerge all the time while older ones might fade away or become more mainstream i will give you one example uh, i suppose there are singhalis also here yes ananjana vijay singh okay the muslim sadia har anyway so then uh, when we were schooling when we were doing o level just like that the younger generation used to call older generation the older men chamind okay or then uh, older women chamila or ch something like that i can remember if my memory is correct okay so then those who were having names chamdana chaminda especially chaminda they they were really embarrassed at that time ah uh, chaminda ke ne khambuna that means an old person but now we don't use like that okay so that is one example for uh, the temporary usage of slangs now it is nine i will check how many slides are there if it is just uh, two slides we can do no dear now we are with the slide number 20th but it contains uh, 10 more slides okay so even though we try it will take another half an hour shall we continue this next week ah ne 9:30 ne our time is 9:30 we can complete sure i always uh, forget that we start by 7 sorry sorry okay sorry sorry <laughs> okay no rapid changes uh, that means uh, uh this uh, slangs changes very rapidly and uh, no slang will remain uh, in use forever sorry, okay we'll go to the next one Okay, madam. 
in group language okay slang is a, a kind of group language a slang can be a way for groups to create a sense of identity and solidarity okay so then if you need you can uh, imagine there are 10 intimate friends there are 10 uh, friends who are very close intimate so if they want they can have a kind of slang using slang term shows you are in the know and part of the group okay so when we are using the slang of that particular group you are showing you are part of that team for example teenagers might develop their own slang words that outsiders wouldn't understand sometimes people use slangs purposely it's just like a secret you language because uh, those who are within the clique only can understand so there, there are slangs like that also Okay, Minda. Creativity and playfulness. Slang often involves word play, shortening of words, or using uh, words in unconventional ways. Okay, so then sometimes uh, to form slangs, we will shorten the word or some unconventional terms. It can be a fun and creative way to express yourself. We'll see examples here. Okay, madam. Yes. Uh, some common way slang is formed. Shortening. Example, uh, turning amazing into amaze or fantastic into fanta. Okay, so uh, people use like that fanta. That means uh, fantastic. Then rhyming slangs are there. This is less common today, but some slang terms originated from rhyming slang in the past. Where a word is replaced with a phrase that rhymes with it. Okay, so then that is highly visible in uh, dramas, Shakespearean dramas. Okay, now we don't use. And then acronyms. Using the first letters of words to create new terms like lol, laugh out loud, or oh my god, omg, rip, rip. Rest in paste. So they are slangs actually. Figurative language using metaphors, similes, or other figures of speech to create new slang terms. Okay, sometimes you will compare certain things. So there are examples, but some things we can't talk openly. You just think about the things you use, then you will understand. What is 
Ah, yes. Uh, good morning, GM. Good night, Jane. TC, take care. Okay. So they are slang actually. So then uh, sometimes uh, you just see some uh, retired English teachers will now understand GM for good morning, GM for good night, TC for take care. Okay. So within that community, they will understand. And there are many slangs which we are totally unaware of, slangs used by modern generation. Okay. Pigeons and Creoles. Okay, Mina. I have uh, muted and I am talking. Sorry. Pigeons and creoles, have you heard of it early? No, madam. Pigeons, some people say pigeons. Uh, pigeons are simplified communication system that emerge when speakers of different languages need to interact. Okay, just imagine uh, there is a place or a company, international company, or maybe uh, there are certain, this happened in the past actually. Uh, if it is a particular geographical area, uh, people from different parts of the world started coming and living there. Okay, so there are people from Britain, UK, there are people from Australia, Africa, Sri Lanka, India, just like that. Okay, so then they don't have a common language. So, uh, uh, they use... Uh, Simplified communication system to interact with each other. Okay, this happens very often when people go for foreign employment and when they are from different languages, they don't know any language properly except their language. And so they form a very simplified communication system to interact with each other. So that is called pigeon. Did you get an idea? No, oh, madam. Sorry, yes or no? No, madam. No, hi. Okay. So then uh, this happened in the past. Okay, so then uh, just imagine uh, there is a special new land. Okay, something just imagine we will like that. So there is a new part of uh, Australia or new part of uh, China or new part of uh, Middle East. So then uh, they are, uh, the people comes to stay in this place from different parts of the world. The same geographical area, but people are from different areas. Okay, so then they don't have a common language. So then uh, just imagine they come and uh, stay in the same scheme of house. And then uh, room, uh, house number one, their mother tongue is something else. And those who are in house number two, their mother tongue is something else. House three, another mother tongue. It's like that. But when they live there for a long time, they need to interact with each other. So they... Form a simplified communication system. It's a new one actually. So then there are uh, words from different languages. That is called pigeon. 
Did you get an idea now? I uh, yeah, madam. Uh, oh, that is that has happened in the past in the world. Then Creoles develop when a pidgin becomes a native language for new generation. And अभी तो मु अम्मा तात गिल लालू तेरिया एक पादिंची बेला हो पिटर आता है. So then they form their own language to communicate with each other. खाती है मैं कहती हूँ लाभ तो language जिकिल दें communicate करेंगे नहीं आना हो. And this generation give birth to their kids. मैं बोला कि पता ना लालू तेरी लामा Okay, so then PG, that PG will become their native language. May I think if it's a lama in the Maubasha, we know, are our goal of form Karagatta language. So that is called Creole. Yeah. Think for a while and check whether you got the idea. Okay, Penta. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes. Yeah, Penta. That means uh, because of the purpose of communication, when there are people from different languages, they form a new language to communicate. Okay, so that is, we can't say exactly what it is because people are from different languages. So they form one common system to communicate and they are next generation they will see that uh, simplified communication system as they are native language so that is called creole okay read okay so then This is once again about uh, pigeons. Okay, madam. Uh, pigeons are simplified communication systems that emerge when speakers of different languages need to interact, that you know already. Imagine a trading post where people from various languages background come together. In the past, actually, because of business purposes, so there are certain geographical areas with which are very famous for business, maybe areas close to harbor like that. So then they are uh, definitely people will come to that area from different areas of the world. So they are using different languages. So when they live there for a long time, they automatically form a common simplified system to communicate. Okay. Then the next one, limited views.
document. Uh, limited use. Uh, pigeons are typically not used as a native language because pigeons, the language was started by adults. Okay, so it is not a native language. They are functional for basic communication. So when they want to interact with each other, they will use the pigeon. But once they go back to home, back home, when they see their family members, they will use in their mother tongue. Uh, yes, complexity of a full-fledged language. Vocabulary and grammar are usually quite limited. So in a pigeon, the vocabulary is limited and the grammar is also limited. Okay. Yes, a short lifespan. Pigeons don't always survive long term. If the need for the pigeon disappears, it might fade away. Okay, so then uh, pigeons, uh, they will not survive for a long time. Uh, if, uh, if the need for pigeon disappears, it will go away. But in this modern world, 21st century, I don't think there's something called pigeon because uh, the whole world has become one village, a global village. Yes, they Okay, madam. Yes, from pidgin to language. A creole develops when a pidgin becomes the native language of a new generation of speakers. So this does not happen regarding all the pidgins. But there may be very rare pidgins which develop to a creole. Okay, This can happen if a pidgin becomes the common language for a group of people who might have originally spoken different languages. Children growing up in this environment learn the pidgin as their first language and in the process expand its vocabulary and grammar, making it more complete language system. Okay, so then earlier we discussed pidgin is a language with very less vocabulary and grammar. But in the process of pidgin becoming creoles, the generation will develop and expand the vocabulary and grammar. So there are some pigeons in the world which became a, uh, creoles, but not all the pigeons are becoming creoles.
Okay. Full fledged languages. Creoles are not simply corrupted versions of established languages. They are recognized as independent languages within their own unique grammar and vocabulary. Okay, so then Creoles, we cannot say uh, corrupted languages. They are kind of original languages, actually independent languages. Uh, because they have their own unique grammar and vocabulary. High tier uh, Creole, for instance, developed from a French-based teaching and is spoken by millions of people today. You know, Haiti. So then Haiti state, Haiti Raj. So then Haiti and Creole, uh, it developed from the French-based pidgin. But now millions of people are using Haiti and Creole. So it's their language now. Okay, you can Google the language of Haiti. So then you will get this information. Okay, madam. Yes. Long lasting impact. Creoles can become stable languages spoken by entire community. So then we discuss the example Haiti and Creole for an example. They can even influence the development of other languages in the region. Okay. Sometimes Creole may develop other languages in the area also based on the Creole. Okay. So then this letter part actually I gave for your information because as students who are learning language and linguistic, you should have some idea about dialects, teaching, slang, creole with that purpose. Okay, jargon. Okay, uh, but uh, we had completed the uh, former part. Okay, so language and variation that was uh, our topic language variation and change and that is the second topic we did today the earlier one was pragmatics okay so are you clear with these two any questions yes, yes i don't know i have no idea whether you are given assignments or not i have to get it from the institute okay so then uh, have you started the other subjects no, madam. So then how many subjects you are doing for this semester? Six, madam. Six. So then uh, you did not get assignments and those things yet, I suppose. Uh, not yet, madam. Ah, okay. So then if they ask me to set the assignments, we'll see. I, I'm also new, so I have no idea. We'll see. Okay, madam. Okay. So then okay. I, I have no idea how many uh, how many days you are conducting one subject. Is this your first I said you. No, as of now, we are only doing three subjects. Uh, after finishing these three subjects only, we'll start doing the other three subjects. Ah, yes, for right. how, uh, how long, how many hours you are having per one subject? Two hours, uh, madam. Each subject contains two hours, madam. No, no, no. I mean all together for the whole semester. Two into how many days? Four days we have lectures, madam, for a week. No, no, I know. I know one subject for how long you are learning. I have no idea. I will get all these things verified because uh, so we are having some more uh, topics remaining. So 
I have to have an idea how long we have to continue these three topics. Is it another three days or is it more than that or less than that? That is what I am telling. Okay, I will verify all these things. Even you do not have those ideas because none of the subject uh, is completed, I think. Uh, yeah, but then actually uh, we, uh, some of us have joined in the middle of the uh, <laughs> class. Yeah. If I can yeah, it. but I have shared all the slides up to now. I think you might have received them. Yes, uh, yeah, we have, Madam, but uh, we couldn't uh, go through it. in Recording is also there. Yes, yeah. we'll manage it. Okay, okay. Okay, it. so then uh, shall we wind up the session for today? Okay, madam. Okay, so then we'll start another topic next week. And meanwhile, I will get to know about all this information and let you know. Yeah, thank you so much. Are you okay then? Good night. Good night, madam. Good thank night. You. Good night. Thank you so much. Okay, welcome.